before we begin this week's episode, uh, we felt it was appropriate for essentially we as a group should talk about what's happened in our country over the past week and probably has extended all the way till this episode's release and everything. Uh, the the grotesque murder of George Floyd by Minnesota police. Um, another instance of horrific police brutality against black people, against minorities in general, uh, capitulating this ever growing trend of racism that's been in this country ever since people literally stepped foot on this country. Um, and before. And yeah, and before <laughs> essentially. Um, it's a long line of disgusting acts that have occurred. And as you have seen, people have finally been basically pushed to the brink. Uh, this happening along with, you know, the, the horrific fumbling of COVID-19 in this country mm -hmm. is just, everyone's just kind of been pushed to the breaking point. Yep. As seen through the numerous, numerous protests happening throughout the entire country, happening globally. Yeah. That's the wild thing is that it's happening globally now. Mm -hmm. All to basically demonstrate against police brutality, to demonstrate for Black Lives Matter. Um, it is, it's just a very incredibly frustrating time. And essentially that's just the way it's been in this country mm -hmm. ever since the beginning. Mm -hmm. This is a country that's supposedly founded on the ideals that everyone's created equal, but that's not true. I mean, that's a, that's a clause that they basically had to put in at the last second because they didn't want to actually think that all people were equal. And even when they wrote it, like, there was no indication at all that they thought that anybody was equal. No, of course not. They were still slaveholders and all that sort of stuff. Well, and, like, you know, women were below them and... Yeah, exactly. Men without property were below them. Mm -hmm. and I mean, it, there was... No one was equal, and they didn't expect anyone to actually be equal. Um, no. But here's the thing. People are equal and should be treated as such. It's true. Um... I feel obviously we are a podcast, you know, that, that delves into entertainment and all that sort of stuff. And we are two white people yes, who have an enormous amount of privilege that mm -hmm. obviously other races do not have. Correct. And I feel like it is within our, it's, it's our duty to basically say, Hey, if you are at all perturbed by what's happening, frustrated, angry, you need to do something. We can't just sit on the sidelines and just act as if everything's okay, or just be like, "Man, this is really a, this is a, this is a shame that this is happening and all that sort of stuff." We have to do something. Otherwise, it's just going to keep happening. I mean, it's still happening. There are people that are dying because of these protests, and nothing's yes. happening to them. Yes. Nothing's um, happening to the people who are killing them. Is what I mean. Yeah. Um, Obviously, if you can get out to protest, if you are comfortable with doing that, you should definitely do that. Mm -hmm. That's that's the key. If not, you know, try and provide aid to people who are out there protesting by giving them food and water if you can. Uh, if you if you don't feel comfortable doing that or you can't do that, uh, donate to various organizations like Black Lives Matter, um, various bail fun found funds and all that sort of stuff, whether it's local or national. If you can um, raise awareness for things that are going around around your your local area or just globally or not globally but nationally as well um, um promote and, and basically raise awareness for 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 black voices yes i think that's a, a definite thing we can't just sit here and like be like oh here is another gratuitous ask uh, gratuitous act of racism now's the time to like oh well here's some black people that are really cool you can't just do that just now. You no. have to do this all the time. We have to propel these voices that are essentially being unheard because people won't give them the time of day. And quite frankly, we should just be doing this constantly. Yeah. Is the thing. We can't just like say, hey, do it during times of, of need or of bad times. This is how we, we fight back. And that's constantly how we fight back is by doing these sorts of things. I mean, in, in terms of like gaming related stuff, I had a conversation today. Um, I was talking about Jerry Lawson 
And um, I was asked, like, well, why didn't I learn any of this? Why don't I know any about like anything about this? I'm like, do you really need that answered for you? Honestly, do you need that answered? Like he, he did something that was amazing for the video game industry. He did something that was revolutionary for the video game industry that we still use today. And he was a black man. Mm-hmm. That's why you haven't heard his name. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, like I, I don't want, we don't want to take up the entirety of this opening just to, to talk about this, but it is very much a thing that everyone should be talking about. And I think like you really can't escape it mm-hmm. at all, really. So it's something you're going to be talking about regardless, but just do your part, especially if you are, you know, if you're a white person like we are, do your part to be, to be better, to work harder, to fight harder and help those that potentially are having trouble like getting their voices out and everything. Um, and just listen listen just, yeah. to what they have to say yeah yeah that is a that is a key component um yeah black lives matter mm-hmm. acab <laughs> black lives definitely matter Al. Yes. What do you do when you're feeling down? Well, that's a lot. Um, it's a loaded question. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, I don't know. What do I do? I, I, I fall back on normal stuff and I also cry. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you like to partake in video games and anime? And some basically how i survive life okay well there you go that sounds like a good thing to do Mm -hmm. it's like you're ingesting some comfort food if you might oh that's what we're going to talk about today on this week's episode of the season lamb checkup ova it's a podcast where we have conversations about video games anime manga i'm jared joined as always by doc alley and ladium hello this is episode 182 and we're going to be talking about comfort food in regards to video games and anime. And by that, I mean, basically, comfort food essentially is a thing. It's like, oh, I'm feeling down. I'm going to eat this food and try and feel better. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's like a lot. Like ice cream is kind of like the de facto one of those. Chocolate chip cookies. Yeah, stuff like that. So like, and you can basically kind of just expand that into other things in all facets of life so like you could be like oh man i like to just do this thing when i'm feeling down or that thing when i'm feeling down so we thought we would discuss some games some anime stuff like that that we like to go to and it's like man things aren't going so well i need a little pick me up Mm -hmm. i'm going to do x thing Mm -hmm. so let's talk about some games let's talk about some games some games. Al, what's a game that you like to go to when you're feeling feeling a bit down? You are not going to be shocked by this at all. Hang I- on. Let me get shocked. So shocked. Some, let me go stick my finger in an electrical outfit. Uh, it, it's a little game called A Link to the Past. Never heard of it. Wow. Get out. Um, you know this probably more than most anyone. I play this game like at least once a year. Mm-hmm. Um, I play it pretty often and like it's one of my go-tos of like, hey, I'm feeling kind of down. This is a fun game. Like I have it memorized so it doesn't really take a whole lot of like thought process- processes to um, get through it. Um, but it's just fun and it's nostalgic and it makes me think of like good times with my brother. Uh, so yeah, that's like my my one go-to and it's not that long either. So, mm-hmm. like, if, if you're, like, 
short on time and need something like that one's a good one for me to go to god i love it did you know that i love link to the past that, that's a very shocking <laughs> i kind of feel like that link to the past randomizer is kind of becoming one of those for me yeah actually that's been really nice to be able to do the randomizer with you i've, I've enjoyed that quite a bit um because mm -hmm. it shakes up the formula a little bit um so we have to put a little bit of thought into it, but also it's just like a good time for us to hang out. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. It's a good way to like team up and get through puzzles and try and chaos. Try and have some chaos and <laughs> basically crack open the the way that the randomizer, or basically the cards the randomizer has dealt you in mm -hmm. a way. Um, like that, that's obviously been kind of like a more recent thing for mm -hmm. for me and for you, but like that's that's been a fun thing just to do and like just in general but also like it's a good just like hey let's try and like just bash our heads against this for a little bit and kind of forget about what's happening elsewhere well and it's also a remix of one of my favorite things so that's always fun too yeah and unless you're like the final fantasy 10 seymour remix in which case get out <laughs> um i also like in that same vein really kind of in the same time frame um I think Super Mario World is just another one of those that's just like it's very easy to kind of just like sit down and hop into mm -hmm. and just let yourself be while you're playing it. Just in that game is like especially just because of like how long I've been playing that game, um, how many times I've played that game, like it's just so ingrained into me that like it's easy to just kind of just like pop that in and be like, oh, this is just this is comforting. Mm hmm. This is just this is just going to be fun. Yeah, a good old fun time to be had, and that game's pretty good too. So yeah, no kidding. <laughs> it's a pretty good game to enjoy. Um, what's say what's say another one that you would like to talk about? Well, another thing that you know about me is that. Um, for some weird reason, when I get stressed out, I really like to play rhythm games. Mm -hmm. um, and my old go-to um, was Persona 4 Dancing All Night. I played that a lot when I was stressed yeah. out. Um, now, it's a little, little game called Love Live School Idol Festival. It's a pretty good game. It's a pretty good game. All Stars can be added to that list now, too, but... Um, I played that a lot, like an ungodly amount. I wish there was an hour count on there so I could like <laughs> find out how much time I put into that. But like even before my talk at uh, Magfest earlier this year, like I sat outside the room and I just played School Idol Festival to try and like calm myself down. Mm -hmm. And like it's it's a fun game. It's got like great music. It's got like cute cards, cute designs. It's got some fun stories in there. So like it never really gets old for me and it's it's just something that i can focus on at that moment of like all right these are these are what i need to hit get through the song you can do this mm -hmm. i love it it's a pretty good game yeah it's not to say that dancing all night is a bad game because it is definitely a good game but it's much easier for me to just pull out my phone and play that than it is for me to go get my vita yeah that, that <laughs> definitely is a a key factor yeah um although i guess for me it is it is easy as well because so, i can just pull out my ps4 and play that game yeah um i should do that. that that is a that is a good version or a good game just to play in general like you said it's easy to pull out your phone and just be like boop, boop, done let's play some let's play some songs and everything mm -hmm. um it's easy to hop in, hop out, do all of that. Uh, I probably am less likely to go to that that game more than you are, <laughs> just because like I've played that game for five years now. Right. It's a lot. Well, <laughs> and a I, lot of that game. <laughs> I don't know that you have the same like I'm stressed out. A rhythm game will help me type thing. Mm -hmm. I've I mean I've definitely been there before, so um. Like years back, like that, like Rock Band was that game for me. Oh right, right. And like I would just like anytime things bad things were happening, I would just zone out and play that. 
and like that would help just tremendously just to be like i'm just gonna focus in on this just not have a worry about anything else that's going on this is just like what i'm tuned in on and that's it and that also helped just because like with that game in particular i just had like such a huge library of songs to go through so like it's not like I would just be playing the same old stuff over and over again. Like I had like a large variety of stuff that I could kind of like pick from and do all that. So like that, that definitely helps in terms of like, you know, just having a good variety of stuff to do. But like, Mm -hmm. yeah, like there was a lot of, a lot of years I've just like, I can remember just things not going so well and just like being like, well, I'm just going to play some rock band and just figure stuff out. Also that game has drums and that's a good also way to (laughs) to relieve some stress (laughs) if you're, if you're doing if you need some of that i'm terrible at drums so never worked for me hot garbage <laughs> that's why in, that's why in rock band 4 they made it easier because like they have an auto kick pedal option oh. on there. i still think i'd be terrible at it yeah it's not easy yeah um i think a lot of my other games that would be on this list are like RPGs. See, like I feel like that would almost, that'd be an interesting choice because like those aren't necessarily games you can kind of just, like hop in and hop out. Mm-hmm. But I mean, that's something like even like the, in the past like month or two, like I went back and replayed Trails of Cold Steel one and two just because I was mm-hmm. super stressed out and I was like, this is something that I enjoy and it's fun to do and I like these yeah. characters, the story, the music. Like I just want to be part of that world again. So, um, and that's like a recent example of an RPG that I have like gone back to and my plan is to go back to three at some point, but I have been playing other stuff. Yeah. And like I would assume like Persona Three is one of those as well. Persona Three Portable, yep. Yeah. Um, the more I can date Akihiko Sonata, the happier I am in life. <laughs> honestly, um, but yeah, Persona Three Portable is probably one of my most played games. Yeah, that's like no surprise. Yeah. But like that's a game you can like it. It works because you know it's for a portable system, so like it has a little bit more of like hey, we can hop in and hop out whenever you kind of need to. Right. Whenever. Um, and I think with, like, those games in particular, like, it's not necessarily just, like, hey, I need to hop in for a little bit and hop out. Like, it's going to it's going to essentially kind of be, like, I need to be in a mood to play that kind of game. And then mm-hmm. when I'm in that mood, like, I'm just going to want to play that game. Yeah. So, like, that, I think that's kind of, like, the a little bit, a little bit of kind of, like, a different case of this, but it still works regardless because like i think like if you're in a bad way and you like you need that kind of game like it's going to help that like oh well i'm going to have this game for a while because it's you know it's a long one so it's not like oh i can i'm going to turn it on play it a little bit and then that's it mm-hmm. like i'm going to be in this for the long haul essentially yeah and i mean when you said comfort food i was like oh god my list is basically like 95% rpgs <laughs> Like, I still have several of them that I'm thinking of, and I'm like, are any of you not RPGs? And then I come into mind straight off the bat that I'm like, oh, you're not an RPG. Thanks, I'm not an RPG. <laughs> you're right. I know it. I know what's going on. Uh, I think a more recent one for me as well is like I like just turning on Zelda two and playing that for a little bit. God, that game's so hard. It's it's hard, but like I don't know. I don't need to like go deep into it and dive like head into like just playing it for for reels. Mm-hmm. I just kind of just like get in there, jam fight, out to the great fight music. a little few fight some stuff, jam out to that music and just enjoy just the weirdness of that game. Mm-hmm. Like I think that that can help as well. Just like getting absorbed into just the the atmosphere the the setting of a game in particular and like that game i think really helps in this regard where it's just like you know going into it such a different thing from everything else in the series that like you just get to have a fun time just seeing all the like the weirdness of it and 
the bizarre quirks that they put into it and just it's a fun time even though like most of the time it's like i don't remember where i'm supposed to go first so i'm just gonna <laughs> walk around this map <laughs> and then everything's trying to get you and everything's trying to get me but i'm gonna stab them <laughs> can't get me yeah yeah uh what else for you um like if you want to just na start naming jrpgs i'm okay with that i mean that's what's gonna happen um shadow hearts shadow hearts covenant yeah yeah um we've talked about them on the podcast before but um they are two of my favorite games like probably at least in the top 20 if not top 10 um and i i replay them quite a bit actually considering like how long that like how big of a time investment that is of playing one and two yeah um but for one like as a historian like having all the like alternate history thing is super fun for me um but two like those characters are just so phenomenal and um again it's it's something that we've talked about before but like it's an interesting game about loss and like grief and mourning and um like that was already an important thing for me when i played it but then like the more that i think about it now I'm like that game just really hits hard for me um and it's also just fun to play like i love yeah. those battle systems i love how like quirky those games are the music is just like insanely quirky mm -hmm. um so yeah shed hearts and shed hearts covenant are just like a plus 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 um it doesn't hurt that i have like new game plus on them so like when it's I not like you're you're going in cold every time yeah yeah those games are funky all right yeah they're super funky and i wanted to play through three and see if it was uh if it was as bad as i remembered but my ps3 said that i cannot it said no <laughs> it said no it said absolutely not you cannot do this like, please okay. stop whatever you are doing it's like i'm gonna let you get five minutes in and then you're done no more <laughs> that's all you need <laughs> <laughs> nothing more nothing less nope uh i like playing old wrestling games oh that makes sense like a lot of them are just like you know games i grew up playing like the uh the old uh wwe smackdown games um and, like those are weird and kind of janky in their own rights but like they have so, like those a lot of the older games like were way more kind of like of an arcade mindset compared to like how they are now or the more trying to be like simulation style mm -hmm. um so like it's just very fast paced and like just like you're just like bam 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 and there's like there's just like, such a fun like just gameplay and style to those that you can't really replicate nowadays with the modern games so like i like playing those and i also like there's games that like i've discovered like even more recently that like I just enjoy like booting up and playing like uh like virtual pro wrestling 2 which is like the the same engine that a lot of the N64 American pro wrestling games were based off of um there's various just like Japanese wrestling games What's the as one well. that you make all the characters and that you you play from time to time? Uh it's Fire Pro. Fire Pro is, Pro is also really good just because like yo you don't even have to play that game and it's still rewarding. <laughs> <laughs> You could just like put on just the, here's I'm just gonna watch the AI do some matches and like it's great. I'm just gonna enjoy this because it's gonna be like crazy stuff happening throughout all of it and I'm just gonna be like this is fun. Yeah, I I enjoyed watching you like go through some shenanigans with the characters. Mm -hmm. It's it's a very fun time just because like that that game in particular like it is kind of based off like the gameplay is first and foremost obviously because like the graphics and everything are very minimalistic. Mm -hmm. Um. And they also know, like, hey, people literally will just watch these matches that we have the AI do. So, like, we have to have the AI be, like, very, very good in those. So, like, they they know their audience specifically, I think. And just kind of, like, they know how to get the best out of those games. Um, uh, but like I was saying, like, I also like some, like, older, uh, just, like, Japanese wrestling games as well. Just, like, I'll just put those on and, like, listen to, like, or, like, watch entrances just to see, like, how weird and, like, innovative they would be on like the PS1 and N64 and just like, you know, 
just to listen to the good Japanese entrance themes and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, that's fun. That's enjoyable. Um, but, yeah, like, there's just a lot of them that I'm just like, man, this reminds me of my childhood and all this sort of stuff. And, like, these games still hold up really well. Um, and they're just fun to go back to and just kind of, like, waste away for a little bit and just, you know, sit back and just have some some good quality fun. F U N. Food. Man. Speaking of fun, I, I realized something that I do play as comfort food that is not an RPG, although I have more RPGs queued up. Mm-hmm. Musou games. That makes a lot of sense. Uh like the ones that I have right now are like Hyrule Warriors that I play. I have Fire Emblem, but I haven't booted that one up as much. But it's a still a good version of those. Yeah, and um <laughs> Good old Dynasty Warriors 7 is still a thing that I, I like, actually will watch videos of that because I don't think that I really have anything that I would play because it didn't age that well. <laughs> Surprisingly enough, a Muso game wow. didn't age that well. Um, but uh, Hyrule Warriors and Fire Emblem Warriors still hold up, but Hyrule Warriors I play more often. Um, but yeah, like, literally no one's shocked that I'm like, oh, Muso games, those are really cool. But like, legit going out there and like killing like 2000 dudes like to some shredding guitars like that's so satisfying and those are games that you can kind of just like are like very just key in the fact that it's just like turn your brain off and just hit some buttons yep just go through there and hit hit buttons to win <laughs> that's all Basically, it is yeah it's great you're super speedy in that. Like, your characters all go super fast. Zoom, it's zoom. Very satisfying. And then, like, in, in Hyrule Warriors, you could put them in different costumes, and that's fun. Mm-hmm. Have Link run around, like, in his postman outfit. <laughs> it's awesome. I'm here to deliver the mail. I'm here to deliver mail and also kill all of you guys. Please help. <laughs> um, so, yeah, those, those are definitely ones for me, but... Again, not RPGs. Some of the few that are not RPGs. Mm-hmm. But I don't get my title for, for nothing. It's true. The Muso Queen Strikes Back. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me tell you about a little game called Garo Mark of the Wolves. I knew that was going to come up. I was wondering when it would come up. That's a game you can just play in like 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. Get in, get out. You get your fill. You see Terry Bogard ask if you're okay, and then he hits a Buster Wolf. Are you okay? That's very satisfying. It is very satisfying. I but, agree. like, man, that's a real good 15 minutes. Because that game is beautiful. That story is nonsensical and great. <laughs> and just, like, just just the the overall, like, I, have to, I obviously we've talked about this ad nauseum, I think, on this podcast. But, like, just, God, that gameplay is so good. Yeah so good and like it's like i own how many places do i own mark of the wolves i would be curious to know how many versions you own. uh i own it on ps4 mm-hmm. i own it on vita mm-hmm. i own it on the switch mm-hmm. i own it on the neo geo mini that might be it Maybe need some more Garu Mark of the Wolves. I need some more Mark of the Wolves. <laughs> I have. I mean, there's been times I've like eyed PS2 and Dreamcast copies of him. Like, man, what if I buy Gar- a physical copy of Mark of the Wolves? <laughs> I mean, I'm not. I'm not crazy enough to f- buy an MVS card of Mark of the Wolves because I don't have a thousand dollars to spend. Right. But, I mean, that would be the end goal. Let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like that game's just God. That game's so good. Uh, I thought of another one that's not an RPG that will be controversial for you, but it's still a game that I enjoy playing quite a bit. Um, Banjo Kazooie. Hmm. Would you? Train disagrees. (laughs) It's a collectathon. It's fun. It It is. It was a game that I like put a lot of time into as a kid that I really enjoyed, and like going back and replaying it, like I still have fun with this. Um. Mm Too, he added too much to it for me to like go back and feel like this is really a comfort for me. So it has to be Banjo Kazooie. 
Oh, yes, the DK-64 of the Banjo-Kazooie series. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that that's that's another one I go to quite a bit. Mm-hmm. I can see that. Like, I, for me, I don't think it would be the case just because, like, obviously I played that game much later. Right. Um, and that game was kind of hard to go back to. Yeah. But, again, something I could easily see being a thing just because like how much of how much game is in that that you can kind of just be like oh, i'm just gonna go go around and collect some stuff mm-hmm. just have some fun collecting junk and puzzle pieces and <laughs> i don't know jingos whatever 30 other things i need to collect in this level are collect all the things collect all the things this one might be a little weird but i think like it fits very well mm-hmm um, just because, like, you can kind of hop in and out somewhat. Um, not the best game in the series by far, but I think it's just, like, the most, the easiest to kind of get into and has just a lot of the most iconic, some iconic stuff in it. But, like, Ace Attorney 1. Yeah. Like, I I, like, I think those, like, I've played that game enough that, like, those early cases are kind of easy to kind of, just, like, breeze through. Mm-hmm. And just, like, man enjoying that soundtrack Mm -hmm. which is just phenomenal um and seeing those characters and everything it's just a a good time it's a good time to be had and and like i said like you can basically breeze through like that opening case very quickly so like it's an easy thing kind of like hop in get your fill of hop out and be like you know i'm pretty good i'm pretty satisfied with this yeah, I was thinking earlier that like the Ace Attorney games minus the middle ones in the trilogy is like those are those are good to pop in for like some comfort food. Totally. <laughs> Just knock out those middle ones and you're all good. <laughs> That's all you got to do. I, I mean, it's true, but like those games are so fun. The writing's really clever. So it's just a good, good time. Yeah. Um, There's something I was going to say. I don't remember what it was. I think two games that we could combine together and say that we have definitely used as comfort food is Mario Kart 8. Yes. And also we we used for a brief period of time a cross tag battle. Yeah. I was also going to say um, Mario Maker. We've been playing quite a bit together mm-hmm. and that's been really fun. Yeah. Uh, um, those that we've basically like we did a lot of Mario Kart. A lot. We should get back to that. We should. Um, but yeah, the, that game is real good. Just kind of like turn your brain off play some celine dion <laughs> play some very bizarre music that alice <laughs> shuffle will pick for you and just kind of zone out and just hang out and play some mario kart dude it's so fun that's a really good time mm-hmm. we definitely use that at times for like both of us being like hey something bad's gonna happen this week i'm not feeling great about it let's do this and kind of get our minds off of it yeah um and it's it's a it worked basically every time. Mm-hmm. Just a good good distraction, and just a good way to just, you know chill out, hang out, get let your mind breathe for a couple hours, hear some weird music, hear some more weird music, <laughs> and just yeah. you know have fun. Um, which is reminding me of like that video that I posted, which they took the music out of on Instagram, but. Uh... It was when we were playing cross tag, and I think you were Chie and you were face down, and I was Yosuke dancing over you. And the music was "Show Me the Meaning of Being Lonely," mm-hmm. and it was fantastic. And um, you know, that's that's kind of like us playing those games in a nutshell, right there. <laughs> Very much so. Um, and I guess in the same vein, like we've done that with the the JoJo fighting game quite a bit too. Is that we just like mm-hmm. pull up the rando and have at it. It's been an interesting thing of like we continuously go back to the game. We're like, oh, now we know who these characters are. We know who you are now. Now We know who you are. Yeah, that's been really fun, actually, because like we played the story mode quite a bit ago and I Mm -hmm. forgot like all of the spoilers of it, which is good. But yeah, um, like as we've been moving, (laughs) they are very, very much like, hey, we're going to spoil the crap out of a lot of these parts for you. But I legit don't remember. And that that's fine. I, I'm fine with it. And like once we got through part four, I was like, oh, I remember that that happening in, in the game. Yeah, they mentioned that. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's that's been really fun for us is to, to go through that that 
<laughs> that game and just do ridiculous stuff and you're like, oh yeah, now I understand what he's trying to do with that move. <laughs> that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I like it a lot. It's an interesting, interesting thing. Jared and Al co-op or fight each other, one of the others. It's that's basically how it always goes. <laughs> There's no middle ground. No. Never. Um I have another one that uh you I have two more uh, two or three more that are RPGs okay. that um, you were like, yeah, okay, I get that. Um, okay. And literally one of them I mentioned like an hour ago because um, I've been playing Xenoblade. Yes. And um, like I literally said to you, like this tedium is really helping me right now because like I'm just running around talking to people and doing side quests and that's been really enjoyable for me. I love doing that. Mm-hmm. Um. Like, I know where all the side quests are. I know what enemies I need to get. I know what collectibles I need to get, Like it, which they've streamlined a lot of it in Definitive Edition, which is great. But, um, like, I know what to do in the game, so it's not really anything I have to think a lot about. Right. But um, it's just really, really fun to me to, like, get all the, like, flavor text from the NPCs and figure out, like, who likes who and who, who doesn't like this person and what kind of controversies are happening in the towns and... Um, getting all my weird armors and getting some some emotional bits in the game that I'm just like man still hits hard for me still hits hard I I love that game so much um and you best bet that T-Rex is going down again you best <laughs> bet he will oh and now I have to avenge you too it's true. He took you down. Now I have to avenge us both. He snuck up on me and I was like, hey, that's rude. I'm having a fight here. <laughs> he always does that. That's what I was doing. So I was fighting. I'm fighting you. I was fighting one of the named enemies over there. And I was like winning the battle, doing well. And then this TX came and just like, you, you jerk. I will avenge your death. I promise. I will. Thanks, buddy. You got it. You got any more? Um, trying to think. If you have more, go ahead. Let me Final think. Fantasy VIII. That makes sense. Yep. <laughs> oh man, Final Fantasy VIII. God, I love that game so much. And um, like that's another one that like I know exactly what to do and where to do it, how to do it. And I just love that story so much. Like the fact that I just published a piece about like Squall the other day was so satisfying to me because it was like, I I finally get to like write what I feel about this character that gets like on constantly. And um, like, I just, I know that Final Fantasy VIII is one of the ones that gets like the most crap out of the, like the PS era, but it's, it's my favorite. It's so good. It's so fun. That soundtrack is so good. Mm-hmm. Like, I could just legit just play Final Fantasy VIII. Like, I don't know. I could play it a lot and be completely happy, but it's it's very comfort foody for me. Yeah. It's in the same vein. Final Fantasy IX also fits that bill. Mm-hmm. Not as much as Final Fantasy VIII, but Final Fantasy IX is there too. But still works. Totally works. Um, have you heard of a game called Final Fantasy Mystic Quest? <laughs> I have once or twice heard about Mystic Quest. That's a good game mm-hmm. that you could fit under this. Mm-hmm. I've definitely gone to that game and been like, man, I'm not feeling great. I don't know. I just want to hear some ripping music. God, that music goes hard. I'm going to play some Mystic Quest. <laughs> You know, that's sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Mm-hmm. You got to hear some ripping guitars. I mean, that's what I was saying with a musso. Is Final Fantasy Mystic Quest a musso? A musso? No. Ripping guitars? Mediocre gameplay? 
I think the, the <laughs> things are starting to line up here. Did Mystic Quest invent the Musou genre? Do you get to kill 2,000 dudes in one map? I mean, you could. It's a giant map. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to take that deep of a breath. <laughs> oh man, um, I think I've got two more, and then I, I think that'll be it for me. Like these okay. are these are really my go tos in terms of like the ones that I've listed so far. Um, and one of these I really would like to replay soon um, when I get when I get time, but replaying it is going to involve some trickery so we'll see how that goes um one is chrono trigger mm -hmm. i can't tell you how many times i've played chrono trigger in my life and last week i was even debating like before xenoblade came out i was like do i want to play chrono trigger i wanted to play chrono trigger i decided to try um mario rpg because i had not played that since god like the early 2000s mm -hmm. um so i was like oh, i want to see which by the way it didn't age that well um, but Chrono Trigger has, and Chrono Trigger is great. I love Chrono Trigger. Love it. Um, the other one. Clearly, you got to play the superior PS One version. No, absolutely not. It's Get got that good gar cutscenes. Garbage art. Get good that good cutscenes. Get that garbage art out of here. Ugh, I hate it. I hate it so much. Nobody, nobody, no, no. That's not what all any... the characters look like Goku. That's the issue is that everyone looks like Goku. And like, that's, that's how the art is, though. But that's not what I want them to look like in my head. Well, that's how they look, though. They shouldn't look like Goku. They shouldn't. Ah. Um, also, like, for most of my life, I thought that Marl's outfit was blue, and then, like, I found out that it was white. And I had, like, a bit of a brain, like, meltdown in that moment of, like, she was wearing white this whole time. Yeah, dog. What did you think? I thought it was blue. Can we also, like, think about the fact that somehow Toriyama was working with Square and Enix at the same time in the <laughs> mid-90s? Yeah, crazy, right? That sounds insane. Yeah. I mean, obviously, like, if anyone could do it, it's him. Because, like, dude was, like, one of, like, the biggest manga artists at the time. Mm -hmm. Had probably carte blanche to do whatever he wanted. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah, of course, it's, like, they're both going to be like, yeah, let's, let's, let's work with this dude. But, like, if anyone else tried that, they'd be like, no, yeah. you worked with the other people. Yeah. You're not coming over here. <laughs> <laughs> it's wild. It's very wild. Um, the other one that I was going to mention that I really want to replay is Breath of the Wild. Yeah, I can see that. I really want to replay it because I've mentioned this um, several times on the podcast, but I can't get that world out of my mind. Like, I still read fan fiction of Breath of the Wild, even after it's been out for, like, what, three years at this point? Well, just you just have to wait a little bit longer for Breath of the Wild. Do. Do whatever that game becomes yeah i it, like that game was just very satisfying to like mm -hmm. explore and walk around and so i, I really want to replay it um my issue is that i really didn't want to like get rid of my file can you, can you not have multiple save files on that i don't I think thought you, you can. could i don't think I you, thought can. you could can you i thought you could i don't know we could do a live google i don't know i swear I, that was a thing but i don't Maybe they patched it? Oh. Don't ask me. Um I think a, a few last ones for me that like that at least I'm just remembering. There's probably a bunch of others that I'm just completely forgetting. Um but like the Yakuza series. Just in general, like I just love being in that area that they they represent of Kamarocho. Mm -hmm. Just like it just just because I've played so many of those games, like, I know that area, like, the back of my hand now. So, like, just being able to explore that place and just, like, you know, going through, like, all the, the stores and everything, all, the, like, the back alleys and all that sort of stuff, like, it's just very comforting. It's just, like, this is a place I know really well, um, and it just, it always feels good to kind of just, like, go back there. It's, like, 
hey, let's go go back to my second home or something like that. Um, and one of the reasons I wanted to play replay like six was just because like I just wanted to hang out in the small like town of that that's based in uh, Hiroshima because like that the is way that the they one where you throw the baby in the ocean that is. I, you do not throw a baby in the ocean in that game. Although Al would like you to be able to do that. But yes, that is that area. <laughs> um, But like just how well that game just like kind of captured like small town, uh, marine town kind of feel mm-hmm. was just like very, very good. And just like there's just something just kind of warming about being in that area that like I just really enjoyed. And also it's like, uh for like other games like i will sometimes just play like high simulation racing games Mm -hmm. put on like endurance races and just like sit there for like two hours and just drive let my mind be free just like the only thing i'm focusing on is this race hitting my marks in the corners and everything and just this is all i'm doing for the next couple hours just gonna zone out and just have fun I support that. Like it's just a it's a fun thing to just be like kind of just know like that's your your goal you have like that's the only thing you need to focus on and like I don't know just something there's something just tranquil about about like just doing long endurance races like that. Um I mean like when I was stressed in college I used to like go for drives so like Yeah. Kind of different but kind of the same. Mhm. The safer way to do it. <laughs> do it virtually. Yeah. Also better for the environment. That's true. Like I remember like I I was doing this like well back into like when Gran Turismo four was out. Oh wow. And I would just sit there and be like, I'm just, hey, this, I gotta do this four hour race, so I better do this. I remember I left my PS two on for like overnight because I was doing a twenty four hour simulation race. God. So that I bet fun. that thing was like a heat trap at that point. Probably. I mean, there is a in a Project Cars two. There is a trophy for doing a full twenty four hours of Le Mans. Like legitimate twenty four hours. Wow. Which is like, oh man, I feel like that's the kind of trophy that's up there with the Rock Band two Bladder of Steel achievement. That's just like, if you've got that, you have done some work. What is that one? The Bladder of Steel achievement is to do the endless set list in Rock Band 2, which is like 80-ish songs, all at once without pausing. Oh, my God. No, thank you. Literally, it's why it's called the Bladder of Steel. I, I did that. I tried to get that tro- that achievement like a few times. And like um, the first couple of times, like it just ended in like just, oh, like heartbreaking failure. Like... I think one time it's just like I failed near the end on extra guitar. I failed near the end on drums. Uh. And then basically I think I just did it on vocals to get it over with. I just sat, in, sat an entire day. I was like, I'm just going to do this for eight hours. I'm going to sing for eight hours God. and get this achievement. And I did it. And I was like, Power oh my God, you, I never have to do this again. <laughs> oh, it was rough. Man. I, I can't believe. Are there any that, like, you know I play that I haven't mentioned? Because, like, I'm kind of in a brain fart today anyway, so. 10-2? 10-2 really good, yeah. I've played 10-2 quite a bit lately. Not lately, lately, but, like, in the past few years. Yeah. But, again, that one's also in the same vein of, like, Shadow Hearts and the, like, themes behind it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, that music is rad, and yes. I love getting to hang out with my girls. Yes. Um I feel like there probably is. But I can't think of off the top of my head. I don't know. I don't know. But those are the ones that I could Like think I said, yeah, there's probably like a head. bunch that were just like forgetting just because that's just the nature of how these things work yeah but you know it is what it is uh let's briefly or however long we went 
do this, uh, talk about comfort food anime. I don't have as many of these, but right. I also didn't watch as much anime until like I started hanging out with you. Well, you can thank me for that or be like, man, I regret this. <laughs> no, I think it's great. Uh, I think first and foremost, one that we would both easily agree on is a show called Love Live Sunshine. A thousand and ten percent, yes. <laughs> That's just an easy one. It's um, amazing. I have rewatched the show a lot. I've rewatched it a lot as well. And just every time, it's just it. It makes me sad because like that show is very sad, but like also it also makes me just, happy. It also makes me feel real good. Just because that's the nature of that that show. You you get to overcome some. Some big obstacles and barriers, and big obstacles, big barriers. Got real great characters. Mm -hmm. um, again, the music's fantastic. It's just a really fun show, but it has a lot of depth to it that you wouldn't expect. Yeah, and I think that depth is what makes it really have such an impact and last so like for so long in my head of like that is my number one anime. I say as uh, I'm looking at like a bunch of figurines <laughs> from it. Hmm. I know another one for you is Dragon Ball. I know you really enjoy that. You love get, watching it every time that it's on TV. Get out. You're get like, out. Man, that Goku. Look at that Goku. There's another Goku. Look at that other Goku. No. <laughs> Look at his spiky hair. Oh, now he's got different colored hair. Now he's got different colored hair. No. <laughs> Goku, Goku, Goku. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, all Goku. Oops, all Goku. <laughs> the uh, the true name of Dragon Ball Fighters. <laughs> Goku, Goku, Goku versus Goku, Goku, Goku. Um, I have another one that you probably would agree with. What's that? Uh, Month of Girls Nozaki Kun. I was literally just looking at that thinking, yeah, that, that seems like a, a thing that I would say that I would, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a thing I would say, yeah. Yeah. I've watched that several times since I originally watched it, and it's so enjoyable. It's, it's so good. It it's... does so many clever things with its genre and everything, um, and it, it spoofs the, the genre so perfectly, mm -hmm. um, and it's, we've talked about this, I think, before as well, it's like, I think comedy and anime can be difficult mm -hmm. because there's so many ways that you can kind of just make it super easy and cheap but this really doesn't do that like it's real earnest comedy mm -hmm. um and that's kind of a rare thing and to see and go ahead no you go ahead i was gonna say it's also not like a bunch of like when did this come out 2014 2014 2015 one of those so things. it's not a bunch of like humor that's specific to those years either so right it yeah. doesn't come across as like super dated mm -hmm. it's just a genuinely fun and funny show and it's really cute too yeah uh i think like sakamoto's in the same vein i was as gonna that. say sakamoto as well just another just really goofy comedy series that again like doesn't really like rely on like oh time period jokes and everything it's just weird it's weird and i like that and it's real good um i think like even like if you want to extend that further like pop team epic is probably another one of those that you could easily go to i've watched pop team epic um a few times since i wrapped it up and like that one works as well just because like it's shorter episodes yeah so, so even like if you, you just want to watch like the first half of it or something, mm -hmm. you can't, even though you're missing out, if you can just go get in, get out. Yeah. Um, and, and since again, it's just, not like continuous until the very end, like it, it's you're not. You can just like pop in a couple episodes and be and be good. Yeah. Yeah. It's fantastic. That is a uh, that is a good good series. Um. Probably one that shot up the ranks that we probably didn't expect to over the past couple of years would be like JoJo. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, which I think would be more kind of like you'd have to be very like in certain moods for a specific JoJo. Yeah. But 
again another series where it can just be you can just like pop in some episodes and just be like boy this this sure is a weird show <laughs> yeah like i've gone back to watch the italian food episode like a couple times at least it's a real good episode it's legit the best episode it's a real good episode and I've rewatched the entirety of um, Battle Tendency once. Mm-hmm. Um, I've rewatched parts of four. Yeah, JoJo is just so good. Yeah. Um, I think another one for me over the years has been K on. Okay, yeah, I could see that. Just because, like, that show, like, it's not obviously like the pacing of that show is not just like upbeat and. Like, everything is just happening all at once. Like, it's a very chill and kind of slower type of show. Yeah. But, like, it's just a show that, like, it was, like we talked about this in Jared and I Watch K-On. Like, this was one of, like, the first shows I kind of went out of my way to find when I got back into anime in 2013. Mm-hmm. So, like, it holds just kind of, like, a special place for me in that regard. And just, like, that show is just really good in general. Just real wholesome fun. And you can get that basically throughout the entire run of it of its of its series and everything so just pop in a couple episodes and just be like oh look what's these wacky hijinks the light music club's gonna get into <laughs> just have some fun um speaking of low-key hijinks uh hioka mm-hmm. i my mom gifted me that on blu-ray yeah thanks mom um and i've rewatched it a few times like it's just like it's low key, it's chill, it's fun. Like I love those characters so much. Um it's just man. I really like Tioka. I'm glad you introduced me to that. And again, it's another like series that's very slow moving and you know, it's not like things are happening bang 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 bam throughout the entire series, but like again, you could like put on like one of like the little mini arcs that they do and just be like chill out and have some fun mysteries Hotaro is so like relatable <laughs> <laughs> he's a good egg um i have one, one... and a half more so go, go ahead no i was gonna say i have one and a half more but i just did hioka so give me yours no you can go ahead it's fine mm, i'll give you my half how about that okay um, since I can't really count it as like an anime, but it's an anime movie, uh, your name. Mm-hmm. I watch that a lot, that a lot, sense. a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And it, it's very, very powerful still. Um, also got me real into rad wimps and like, I listen to them on the reg now. <laughs> you it's a good film. Yeah. Uh, this one's obviously, I think more sad than anything. So like, it's kind of kind of hard to use as comfort food but like that one episode that one scene in that one episode i could easily go back to any time just like use it as motivation uh a place further than the universe Ooh, that one i have not been able to go back to it but it is it's so good i will go back and watch that episode um you know the one i know the one i know exactly which one you're talking about but yeah, yeah like <laughs> I just, I love that episode, and, like, it is so, so well done. It is the most just, like, hey, let's be ride or die friends no matter what. And just the way they wrap that up, it's excellent. And, like, like I said, like, there's a lot of that, that series that's just, like, it's rough. It's rough. In terms of emotions and everything, but, like, I think that episode in particular is like something that I could easily throw on and be like, man, I I need to pick me up and this is going to be the pick me up. Even but, though it's still going to be sad, but. um, You know, I've got that Nindo and like I set it up so that she's kicking the snow. It's good. Like that's, that's the way I actually set it up because like that entire thing is just amazing. And I really want to get the, the other one so that she can basically tell him to F off while she, she's yeah. kicking snow. Yeah. Uh, all right, so my last one. You ready? Give it to me. Real life. That's a good one, yeah. It's a really good one. I've watched it a few times since we originally watched it, and that's another one that I have the the Blu-rays of, but also, like, I just watch it um, streaming. But, man, like, I really enjoyed it the first time, 
but then like watching it on repeat like watching it again like it just hits real hard but it's great Mm -hmm. it's so good i don't think it gets enough love it i don't think it does either like it was kind of like it came and went Mm -hmm. and then obviously like i was i was very surprised that they got a a finale arc yeah um but yeah like i you don't hear a lot of people talk about that that series, but like it's very, very good. It's so good. It's a it's a series that is definitely, definitely worth watching. Um. Actually, I could think of one more. Okay. You go first. Uh, I I will go back and watch some Gundam. <laughs> I'm not surprised by that. Mostly just because like it's you know. It, plays off of like nostalgia and stuff like that but like de- depending on the series they can work as just like man i just want to i want to watch cool robots do things which obviously is not the point of that show <laughs> definitely not the point of that no. show <laughs> but you know sometimes i just want to like if i want to watch gundam wing that's kind of more of the the aspect i'm kind of looking for i'm just like man i want to watch some fun action but like, there's obviously like other series that are like more very in line with like, man, war sucks. Mm-hmm. Do you know how much war sucks? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, like Oh Eight Emma's team is more in line with that. Double uh, O Eighty is very much in line with that. But like, those are good series to go back and watch and just enjoy that overall series. I think as a whole. Well, now that I said I only had one left, I've thought of a few more. Oh no! I know. Um, one of them is like the most stereotypical answer ever. Yes. Cowboy Bebop. Yeah. I've watched that. I so think many for times me, like, I, I don't can. know if I could, if I could comfort food that one because, like, I think I need to be in a time and place mood for that. Mm-hmm. I've just watched it so many times, like throughout the years, and it was like one of the first ones that I really got into. Yeah. It has that special place in my heart. Same with, uh, I was going to say Chobits. Mm-hmm. The, like, I made you watch that one because it was like, this holds a special place in my heart. Yeah. Um, like, is it exceptional? No, Chobits is not exceptional, but like, it's it's still fun. It has really good intro. It does. Mm-hmm. It has a very good Game Boy Advance D make of it. Man, it really does. That's incredible. It's really good. Um, really enjoyable. The um, Persona Four anime. Persona Four anime is good. Yeah. Like I want to say Persona Three anime because Persona Three is better in my yeah. opinion. But but hear me out. I can't. I can't be better because even though I like those characters better and I like the story better, the Persona Four anime is perfection. <laughs> Yeah, and I think the movie the movie adaptations of three aren't that great. They didn't stick the landing. Yeah. And like I think that's mostly just because like it's a movie adaptation. So yeah. like you're very hamstrung on your time length and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, like the four anime is just good because they really are able to kinda like let loose. Yeah. Like that's where we get like chaos uh you and it's fantastic. I almost said yo. Um like that characterization is amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and like with the the whole like go, let me try again. The the golden aspect of it, they essentially like set it up so that that it's canon that like he has a new game plus on that. And it's wild. Yeah. Like to take that in anime is just amazing. Like that's a really goofy way to to go about that, but like it like it just it it basically they kind of have to with how the way. Uh, that series works and how much they're just like jumping around and everything mm-hmm. but yeah it's it's real funky and goofy but like again like they are able to capture like the essence of like man these characters are weird yeah i mean i think that's what's really fun about it though is it like you really get the vibe of like how weird these people are and like i love persona 4 i love the persona 4 characters and so like getting to hang out with them but also see them at their true glory of being weirdos is just super fun yeah um which same with like we talked about cross tag like we got to see them as weirdos in that one too but um 
yeah, that anime is just really, really good. And like, I keep thinking specifically of like the King's Game section of it. It's mm-hmm. just hilarious. And then there's like the whole arc of like, what is he doing? And it, it's trying to demonstrate like how he's doing all the social links. Mm-hmm. And they're like, what is he doing? Why is he? He's over here now. Like, what is happening? Um, I think that it was handled very well how they like gave him a, a personality. Yeah. And like, I know that they said that they like kind of regretted how far they went with him. I'm like, no, that's fantastic. He he is a good boy, and they you did went a far great. enough. You went just right on that one, man. Like. I, it made me actually like Persona 4 better when I played because I was like, you know what? I just like to imagine this weird gremlin boy. Like, <laughs> that's who that is. It's great. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise, you know, he's kind of a shell. Yeah. And, like, gremlin boy's better. It's, it's you know, it's, it's the thing with a lot of just, you know, voiceless protagonists is that, like, you can make them to however you want, but a lot of times they're just kind of there. Yeah kind of bland and like this basically takes that and it's just like what if we just make this dude just weird <laughs> and like they're acknowledging the fact that like the stuff that he has to do in the game is weird mm-hmm. like they're acknowledging that like him having to go do all these activities to like meet with these people and help them out they're like that's a weird thing for him to do but he's doing it anyway yeah um also with the the dub you got Laura Bailey, which is well, that was in the game, but still, I just keep thinking of Laura Bailey. It's a good, it's a good dub. It's a good dub. Man, that's a good show. I should rewatch that soon. I mean, new Jared and I'll watch. We have an avenue to do that. <laughs> I think I think that should. That's be our- been on the wait list for like. Three years now. I, I think that's what's going to come next after we finish OG Love Live. It's going to be Persona 4 for Jared and I'll watch. I'm, I'm, I'm going to call it right now. Well, there you go. Can't go back. No take backsies. <laughs> no take backsies. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm done. That's it. Unless you want to count any Yasha. I mean, if you want to count any Yasha, you can. Um, I'm just thinking, and you you know about this too, but um, there was a moment when I was a TA. A TA. A TA. And being a TA for like an intro level history course is a miserable experience. And I had to grade a bunch of papers and like a very quick turnaround. And they were just mind numbing and like breaking my heart. And so at one point, like I went and got like, my snow cone maker and made like a wine slushy and pulled out like the final arc of Inuyasha and just like put that on while I was grading to try and like make me feel better and not fail everyone. And like, I think that says something for it. Like that was my choice was I'm going to go watch the final arc of Inuyasha yeah. while I'm grading. <laughs> this will make me feel better. And it did. It succeeded. We'll see how the new one does. Yes, we will. Anyway, now I'm done. I'm out. I was throwing in the towel. Well, like, there are some that I I watch, but, like, there are many that I can't really consider. Like, this is something that I go to regularly, you Mm -hmm. know? Right. No more comfort food for me. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> uh, I think we've had our fill of comfort food. I mean, I'm feeling feeling pretty good. Pretty full. Pretty full, pretty warm inside. Yeah, but like, we've talked about some quality, quality stuff. Yeah. And some not so quality stuff, but still fun stuff. Yes. I agree with that sentiment. Um, a lot of the things we discussed today have probably proper episodes. So if you want to go back and in, into the archives and find those episodes, you can hear there. us talk about them at length. Yeah, you can hear us talk about them for longer than like a couple of minutes. <laughs> <laughs> 
But yeah, that's going to do it for this episode. So if you'd like more from us, go to seasonlandmecheckup.com or sac.cools where you can find past episodes of this podcast. Like we talked about, there's a bunch of other stuff that we mentioned in this episode that probably has full-length episodes, so you can find those. Uh, we also have columns reviews on the site as well. If you'd like more from Ann Ladium, go to annladium.com. She's got columns reviews. Uh, she's got a new piece on Squall up. She could I read did. that. I wrote a piece about Squall, you guys. It's great. Well, he's great. I can't say my writing's great, but he's great. <laughs> it is a, it's a fun read. Yay. Yeah, I've had it in the works since October, but, um, you know, a lot of stuff happened, and I only had two paragraphs at the time. So now it is complete. It is what I wanted it to be, and I'm real happy with it. Now it is free from your system. It is free. It's true. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash anime checkup. Let us know if you have comfort food, games, and anime. Yeah, and let us know all that sort of stuff. Yay. Be very, give us a reason why it's your comfort food or anime. Don't just be like, yeah. I like this. <laughs> like, okay, it's cool. Yay. Good for like, you. Like, why is it why does it make you feel good and everything? Yeah, like we, we want to feel good. We want some we want some positivity and some happiness and all that jazz. Mm-hmm. So like let us know. Yeah. Uh go donate to some charities. Yes, yes. Do that. Donate to some charities. Uh, next week we, I don't know, maybe we'll talk about Xenoblade. Maybe, maybe I'll be done with that game by then. I don't know. I feel like I'm probably like going to be a hundred hours in that game. Still not done with it. I mean, my first run of it was 140 hours. Oh God. Yeah. But also God. like it was me. I know. <laughs> um, and I still have to play the, the second part of it too. All right. But that's like 10 hours. Yeah. I haven't even started that. Uh, maybe we'll talk about that. Maybe we won't. Who knows? We'll figure it out next okay. week. Blah 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 blah. That's 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 how things go. Mm-hmm. Good. Hey, next week we'll talk about E3. Oh. Oh. You know, I was listening to lockdown the other day. I was like, oh, that's not happening this year. I mean, we're in a lockdown in a different kind of way. I yeah, sure. Song still, still bop though. <laughs>